Welcome everyone, Josh first back at it again with some more Epic 7 and today we're going to be showcasing Mascot Hazel. Now usually I do an, an analysis and kind of break down some of the gear sets and stuff like that. You could build up and look at her skill tree before we go into any kind of gameplay. But this time around we're going to go ahead and jump into gameplay first. So we're going to go ahead and throw her on Golem 10. Now she can beat Golem, um, sorry, she can beat Wyvern 10 as well. But it's not always 100% because, you know, it depends how many stacked poisons I get on her. Um, early game or not if I can avoid those then I can get through it pretty easily But we're gonna be doing golem 10 today anyways because that's what a lot of you may be using her for Especially if you got yourselves a fire team as you can see I do not have a fire team at all So <laughs> she's kind of on her own here, but now I did take her into raid and she did exceptionally well Especially against the spider uh, the top left boss pretty much dominated that with no problem So that was pretty fun, but anyways, let's get into it. So let's go to battle here uh, let's go down here to hunt. Let's go to hunt on golem 10 and Let's get into it All right Everything looks good cool Now keep now I do believe my comet power on hazel is 37 K She definitely needs a lot of work on her um, gear, but it is what it is my DN's only at 28,000 so I still need to work on her quite a bit as well. Most of my gear is invested into Kisei and, of course, Cartuja. Alright, so we're going to get poisoned, which we always do. Alright. Just going to go ahead and let them take out these fodder on autopilot here before we get to the boss. Cartuja doing his thing as he uh, tends to. Could have sworn, though, they said in the hunt update that if there's more than two enemies on the first wave, that those condensing it down to two. Maybe it was three, but I thought it was two. I don't know. I might be losing it. I might be losing my marbles. <laughs> but it's all good. And, by the way, if you're wondering how much stamina this took to complete her specialty change, I think it was somewhere around mid-2000s to 3000 in total to, of course, um you know get the 500 kills or whatever that I needed in story as well as getting all the 150 hunts I did now granted I didn't do it on the lower hunt stages I did it on hunt 8 because it was the same cost as hunt 7 which I believe was 16 stamina so it took me a, a little bit more than maybe some of you some of you may be only farming on like maybe hunt 1 or something just to make your attempts go very very quick but I kind of wanted to get some value back from my attempts so I went ahead and um and did it. There we go. I had to select the tree to get rid of that healing. Even though Hazel does have that S1 to make them unhealable, it doesn't always go off. So it's better just to get rid of the tree early and not have to deal with it. And Kisei, of course, isn't a unit that I'd really prefer to run in Golem. But, you know, it is what it is. So it may take a little bit longer than normal for me to get through here. Um, some of you, like I said, if you have more fire units available, um, this will probably be a lot easier to go through. But, man, Hazel can do a lot um, for your team um, in Golem for sure. And honestly, her giving herself a greater attack isn't a bad thing either. It makes herself more tanky. So even if you're not running a full fire team, she can still somewhat be very tanky on herself. Now, I am running Water Origin as well. I feel like it's maybe a little bit better if you're not running a full fire team than Tome. So just, you know, a little bit of food for thought there. But uh, yeah, we're going in. Let's go ahead and wait for Deanne to come back through. All right, let's go ahead and use Arky now. We just want to get rid of that tree as fast as possible. Just to get it out of here. It's almost dead. And it's armor broken for one more turn. There we go. Almost gone. Hazel's going to go in. Do 4,800 on a crit. Not bad. Not bad at all, Hazel. Good job, guys. Got rid of that nasty tree. Now we can just focus on the boss. And again, this is on Golem 10. All right. Going in with that bleed. Good job, Cartuja. Of course, we're not going to get too much out of Kisei, but it's all good. All right, Deanne's going in. I still got to get my skill 3 cooldown on Deanne. She's only got her barrier cooldown right now, and I believe everyone else has their cooldown, so that's good. And here we go. We're going in. You could soul burn on this and get uh, an additional <clears throat> turn out of all your buffs, but it's all good. We don't need it. At least I hope not. 
All right, let's go ahead. We'll activate Arky again as soon as we... Oh, I should have did it there. Combat readiness to end. Rip. Right, we'll go ahead and use it on uh, Kisei's turn. Because Kisei's not going to be doing us too much help here for the golem himself. Not bad, Arky. Good job. All right, Kisei's going to go in. Doesn't do too much damage as expected. Ah, oh, you stunned Hazel. Rip. Rip debuffs. Ooh, there we go. Not a bad sequence of attacks there. Got the boss a little bit, a little bit under halfway now, so that's good. Cartouche got that defense break off clutch, and again, we're we're pretty much playing this for the most part uh, on semi autopilot. And what I mean by that is I'm not playing it fully manually, like I'm not doing any burns or anything like that. I'm kind of letting the AI do its thing while just kind of slowly, you know, steadily guiding it, um, you know, with using guardians here and there and, of course, making it hit the tree. Uh, but outside of that, it's pretty much just doing everything on its own. Just want to give uh, Hazel a little bit of love here. <laughs> um, her specialty change for me personally wasn't what I wanted it to be, like nowhere near it. But I kind of can see what they're trying to do now that we know how Hunt 11s are working. I feel like they're really trying to push mono teams for Hunt 11. Um, so I have a feeling that I believe Helga was leaked as well as a specialty change. And Montmorency. Uh, Mont so those might be our AoE. Or I'm sorry, our AoE. Our uh, mono earth support and our mono ice support. Possibly. So look for that in the future. So we'll see what happens. And there we go. Boom. Hazel. Crying and laughing at the same time. It's so confusing. Her S3 is very confusing. Please, somebody tell me what's going on in that S3. <laughs> it looks like she's being bullied or cheered. I have no idea. It's so weird. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And then we're going to take a look at Hazel's statistics right after the fight. And again, I am not running a very optimal team for Golem 10 at all, but Hazel is helping us get through it. So she's really carrying the team right now, even though it's not a mono fire team. And I don't have that much investment in her skill tree at all. I believe it's like plus 14. So I'm like almost halfway there, but man, still need a lot. I tried to invest in the things that I needed right now immediately. So, but we'll take a look at all that when we do the analysis breakdown and all that good stuff. All right, and card two just should be wrapping this up on the next one. Unless Hazel wants to do it right now. All right. <laughs> or Dan? Nope. Nope. Card two is going to come in and finish it off. All right, there we go. <sighs> there we go. Terrible sword, no doubt. Yep, as expected. All right, now. Wow, Dan actually got the MVP that time and instead of Hazel. Hazel got my MVP on my last run that I did um, that I forgot to record. Rip. So let's see what happened here. All right. So our DN actually out healed. Uh, <laughs> our DN with just an artifact out healed Hazel. Um, I don't know what you guys want to think of that or not. Um, 59,900 from Celestine over the 40,000 healing that we got from Hazel at 27% um, towards MVP status, which, of course, DN got. If we look at attack, she definitely out damaged our Deanne, of course. 17,000 damage. Not bad. And actually, our Kisei actually did more damage in that round than Cartuja, Mostly to the minions. So, <laughs> that's kind of surprising. Th these numbers are completely different than my last run. Very weird. Uh, defense. Uh, DN barely edged out uh, our Hazel with 29,612 over 28,763. Not too bad there. And then, of course, support, which would be, uh, of course, MVP would go to DN. So there we go. I don't know if that supports fully the HP number. It's just like overall support, like buffs and stuff like that, you know, including barriers and, you know, attack buffs and all that other stuff that they do. I'm sure some of you in the comment section below can actually verify that. But either way, um, not too bad of a showing from Hazel, especially not for being in an optimal team for her because she really wants to be on a team with all fire heroes that way she can get the maximum output of her passives that she's getting from her skill tree as well as of course the maximizing on her heal um plus she can't make good use of her s3 because the only attack greater attack that she can benefit from is herself she can't really give it to another hard hitter um like a haste or a ken because i didn't have those in my team or an aramanthra for example 
So I couldn't showcase her to her utmost potential without really having a full fire team. But um, I tried to do my best. I hope you guys did enjoy that little showcase there on Golem 10. Uh, let's go back into the lobby now and break down possible armor sets that you could run for her and stuff like that. So let's go into details. All right, as you can see, mine is, of course, SSS Devotion and Max Level 60. I already 6 starter, and she's 5th Awakened. Um, like I said, I am running Water Origin, which is only a level 11, so it's not. It's only been enhanced, uh, rather, to level 11. So uh, we got some work to do there. Now her, now, her stats are pretty well balanced for the most part. She's got 1,399 attack, 1,002 defense, 10,591 HP, 171 speed. Now, you can increase her HP a little bit more by bumping up that attack. I think the sweet spot, if you can do it, is to get her around 15,000 HP and probably 2,000 attack. If you can get the gear to pull that off, that would probably be an amazing Hazel for you. Um... You know, we're running her with speed because we just want her to be able to go first and get all those attack buffs and stuff like that, especially the greater attack. That's what you would run if you were running a fire team. But in my particular team, since I'm not running a fire team, I'd probably want to go ahead and run all HP with maybe some nice main stat attack stat percentages on the right side gear. That's what I'd really like to do. But I didn't really have that gear available right now, so I kind of just slapped on speed gear. But if you're running in her a mono fire team... I think if you put the speed gear on her, that's going to be perfect because then you're going to get that greater attack on one of your other heroes. That's going to hit very hard um, you know, right at the beginning of a match. That's going to be perfect for you and only on a three-turn cooldown. If you enhance her skills on her S3 four times, it's going to benefit you a lot to do that. You'd probably want to go ahead and run Tomei as well on that regard. But if you're running her in outside of a mono fire team, I really like Water Origin a little bit better. Um, but that's just me personally because I feel like outside of a fire team, you want to kind of make her more tanky. Um, that way she can survive. And what's really nice is when she uses um, some of her passives from her skill tree and her S3 and stuff like that, she can kind of keep herself alive because she is a fire type. So she's benefiting herself from her own passives and S3. So that's good at least. So, you know, I would say outside of a mono fire team, try to make her tanky. Inside of a mono fire team, maybe try to make her more speedy with higher attack and maybe give her tome over water origin and do the complete opposite maybe if you're outside of a mono fire team. But that's just my personal opinion. You can build her a lot of ways. You can go full HP. You can go HP and hit. You can go speed and hit, speed and HP. You can go attack and hit. Um attack and hp i mean there's a lot of you could even put full lifesteal on her with hp because the lifesteal gear is very good because it has good attack stats and hp stats so that could be a thing that you could use as well keep her and make her very tanky with lifesteal perhaps especially if you beat abyss 80 and you have all the good 85 abyss gear so there's a lot of different ways that you can build her i just feel like you want to either make her very fast but still be able to heal pretty well um, or make her very, very tanky so she's very self-efficient and can stay alive to keep getting those heals off, especially if you're not in a mono fire team. But So that's kind of my set breakdown for you guys, if you were wondering. Um, Shamadra Staff is also a very good one. If you want to make her kind of tanky, you can really up her heals, especially if you're not on a mono fire team. Shamadra Staff might be the way to go for some of you. Um, so let's go to the skill tree really quick. As you can see, I'm only at plus 14. Um, her first rune, I got a plus one. Then her second, I got a plus three and a plus three. The first one, some of you may want to pay attention to this one, um, especially if you're doing it, going against Golem. I, unfortunately, did not have the resources to invest in this one. I was trying to get her healing off a little bit better first. But if I had the additional runes, this would probably be the next rune that I focus on getting the plus three because she can get an additional 25% on her S1. And if you give her some skill enhancement, you could take her S1 up to 75% chance to make the enemy unhealable, which is very clutch if you want to blitz through Golem because then you won't have to worry about fighting the tree. You could just blitz through it, keep spam unhealing on your Golem and not have to worry about it. So there's that. Uh, rune two, we got that healing fully up. Um additional 30 like what 50 percent right there so that's pretty good um healing of urgent regen increases by 100 percent for targets with less than 50 percent hp so gonna be some massive healing right there <clears throat> now her uh, health rune increases health by 20 percent which you guys can see there 
pretty cool. This also upped her CP by, I believe, almost 2K. So that was pretty nice. Nice little bump. Um, achievement rune, you can get up her combat readiness up an additional, looks like 10%. Um, as you can see, I don't have enough runes to up all these, but you get the idea. Um, increase speed by one, you can actually add that up um, an additional five if you go the full route. Of course, I've only got one on there as well. So that's nice, a little speed boost, especially if you're running a speed set. Uh, increase speed, I already, already looked at that one, rip. <laughs> uh, guard rune, um, you can increase the effective chance by 20%, so that is also nice. Grants continuous healing to the ally for two turns with a 5% chance if the ally is a fire elemental hero when using a girl in uniform. So, rip. <laughs> now, that can work on herself, though, which is nice. Um, here we go. We got Courage Rune after using Book of Fire absorbs 1% of damage dealt as health. Again, this kind of, you know, can lead you towards maybe wanting to throw that Lifesteal set on your Hazel because you can take that up to an additional 5% healing um, on the Courage Rune, which is nice. And if you combat, uh, combine that with the addition of her Continuous Healing Passive possibly and her more healing effect uh, when you're running, you know, a Mono Fire team or with herself, you know, of course. And then you would add that with a lifesteal set, which also gives you additional HP back when you do damage with her S1. On top of her S1 being unhealable, it could be a really good golem killer um, and be really good for really all forms of content. So very, very cool. Um, Mercy Rune, increases effectiveness of all fire elemental allies by 2%. Of course, you can take that up to 10% as well. Um, Fruition Rune, increase the attack of all fire elemental heroes by 2%. And you can take that up to, again, 10% total. So another big thing there. And, of course, that boost also applies to herself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for Mascot Hazel. I hope I covered everything. Hopefully I answered any of your questions. If you have any additional ones, please leave them in the comment section below. Hope you guys all enjoyed that. And I'm probably going to be rocking her for a while because right now she's my main healer. Because, as you can see, outside of her, I've got Destine and Akades. And they just really aren't getting it done for what I need them to. And I don't have Angelica yet, so that's another issue. So right now, Mascot Hazel is my go-to healer at the moment, but she's getting the job done. She's not where I wanted her to be. My conclusion on her really isn't she kind of falls a little bit short of what I wanted from her. But for now, she'll get me by, and hopefully the next banner will be that new fire uh, Soul Weaver. That is, I'm going to dub her Lady T. So hopefully we can pull her next week here on the channel. That'd be awesome. Uh, anyways, hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and join us in the Discord below. That way, you guys can follow us before and after the movie. Up uh, <laughs> after the movies, after the videos. So until next time, I hope you guys all have an awesome day wherever you are. Until then, peace.